The process of finding black actors from the early and mid-1900s will most likely result in the discovery of black actors who many today would call Uncle Toms, Coons, or the Mammy among other negative black labels. It was not until individuals such as James Edwards that popular culture America would be exposed to a more realistic representation of a black man. Prior to Edwards, male black actors were generally only given background roles. Now many might argue that the door was not open until Sidney Portier broke it down. However, I believe James Edwards weakened the door, helping actors such as Portier, Woody Strode, and Harry Belafonte, among others, make a welcoming transition into American homes throughout the nation. While examining black actors in film and television during the 40s, 50s, and 60s, most scholars tend to write little to nothing about Edwards. I intend to correct this oversight by discussing his role in Hollywood. Through the use of the interracial buddy film genre, James Edwards and his on-screen influence within popular culture America during the 1940s and 50s in particular played a pivotal role in helping with the acceptance of the black actor as a leading man. Over the past 100 years, male black actors within American film have traveled a long and winding road. An uphill battle the entire way, during the first half of the 20th century there were rarely respectable roles available for black actors, although there was a desire and interest to see them on the big screen. Images of black men usually meant the stereotypical portrayal of the Tom, Coon, or the Buck which fulfilled many of the negative black stereotypes that black America wanted to escape from. I ain't bother nobody, just busy getting my own business, doing nothing, resting up. It was not until the end of the 1940s that Hollywood would finally deliver what they believed to be a three-dimensional representation of the black male to white America as a leading male figure. As an army veteran, James Edwards would get his first acting gig on the stage in a play called Deep of the Roots and his first major break in the 1949 film The Setup. Soon after, Edwards would appear in some of the most influential American films at the time. News articles and magazines praised Edwards for his role in such films as Home of the Brave in particular, as well as other milestones such as him being the first black man to appear at the famous club El Sino. While playing a black actor in war films might not seem like a big deal in 2014, this was incredibly significant during the 1950s. The interracial buddy film was one of the first techniques used to promote American nationalism and war propaganda which would bring white and black men together on the same side to overcome an obstacle, ultimately also helping to end official racial segregation. As one of the first movies about the Korean War, Steel Helmet attempted to demonstrate how Edwards' character could work with and alongside white GIs despite being black. Edwards often held critical roles while acting as a sidekick or secondary character, where his role within war films especially helped to promote nationalism, which would help to lift American morale, especially during the Korean and Cold Wars. You'll pay for a ticket, but you even have to sit in the back of a public bus. Isn't that so? That's right. A hundred years ago, I couldn't even ride a bus. At least now I can sit in the back. Maybe in 50 years, I'll sit in the middle. Someday even up front. There's some things you just can't rush, Buster. But despite the new demand for a black leading male figure in Hollywood, there was apparently only enough space for one individual to fulfill that need, and it was Sidney Poitier. Now there are a number of different reasons Sidney Poitier is more credited for the success of black actors than James Edwards. The Afro-American in 1957 wrote about the success of the film Edge of the City and how it was termed a first-class portrayal of the colored man's role in a phase of American life. The article goes on to quote John D. Silvera, chairman of the actors group saying, Nowhere have I ever seen as much integration on the screen that shows colored people in their everyday roles as we see them in public. And Sidney Poitier, had the main role. This film was released a little less than 10 years after Edwards had his big break, but why wasn't he given that recognition instead? With no specific answer, one must consider the road traveled by Edwards thus far. Being a black male actor in the 1940s and 50s would surely mean he would be faced with many discriminatory and segregation-oriented practices that made it challenging. The lack of demand for fair, equal black roles that took place during the civil rights movement in the mid-50s and 60s was more of Portier's time frame. So although Edwards was charming, good-looking, and extremely talented, he had very few opportunities that would allow him to play a leading male black character. 
Any extra matches, sir? You ought to keep away from this, sir. Mr. Tanner mightn't take too kindly to Mr. Ed Gaither's boy being around. A lack of opportunities to act in a leading male role would not stop Edwards from continuing to make progress within the film and television industry. In 1957, the Afro-American wrote an article about James Edwards that recognized his talents, but spoke about the struggle he endured as a black actor looking for bigger roles. For this reason, he decided to become a writer and do it himself, writing plays and television shows. In fact, Edwards was so good at writing that Universal International Studios signed a long-term contract with him. But during the same period of time, Hollywood was very similar to the contemporary trendy, fashionable, and gossip-thriving industry we currently know of. As a result of this, much of an actor's personal life would also be promoted, some of which were stories instead of facts. In Donald Bogle's History of Black Hollywood, Bright Boulevard's Bold Dreams, he reveals that James Edwards' career may have been drastically affected by rumors that involved him having affairs with the wives of a few directors and producers and white actress Lena Turner, who supposedly was a close and lifelong friend with legendary director D.W. Griffith. An affair of this magnitude involving such a figure as Griffith would surely disrupt the career of a black actor, especially a black man during the 1950s. So it may be the rumors of an interracial affair that got him blacklisted and the possible attempt of casting directors to avoid controversy that may be the contributing factors to a career that almost expanded 30 years but yet is often forgotten. James Edwards' life and career offers a valuable view into American racial culture from the 1940s and 50s, resulting in the indisputable credit that he deserves for his role within interracial buddy films that helped to not only close the gap between whites and blacks, but to further the advancement of the black actor. No, Mr. Patterson! Don't do it, Mr. Patterson! Please, don't no. do it! If your father was here right now, he'd say the same thing! You can't take the lost vengeance into your old hand! He killed Ellie! That don't make it right to kill him! Listen to me! Back there a few minutes ago, I was going to beat a man's brains out. I was going to take his body and throw it out of the car like you did my little girl. But my wife, she took my arm and she said, no! Please, Mr. Patterson, no! Don't do it! Listen to me. She said, the Lord said not to kill. Thou shalt not kill, the Lord said. Mr. Patterson, please! Please, Mr. Patterson, thou shalt not kill, the Lord said. Edwards demonstrated the importance of coming together and helping to end segregation in a noble and nonviolent way. So it was through this interracial buddy formula that would revolutionize the position of black actors in Hollywood film. Like this. All our life we've been fighting against people taking the law into their own hands. So I, I handed her the gun and I come out here. While most contemporary sources will refer to Sidney Poitier as the official pioneer of black actors, occasionally there will be a source that says otherwise, such as Dennis Hunt, who considers James Edwards the first crossover black film star, as noted in a 2008 Variety publication by Lawrence Christian. Because of figures such as James Edwards, the interracial buddy film has continued to make progress by demonstrating not only a pleasurable feeling when seeing black and white men come together to overcome their differences, but also a more accurate and respectable representation of blackness. Black actors such as Will Smith, Denzel Washington, Eddie Murphy, and Lawrence Fishburne, among others, are a result of James Edwards and his role within American film.